thought we'd start out here today. The weather is amazing. Today we're making cheesecake. Welcome to Pop Keto, where we aim to help you live a sustainable keto and low carb lifestyle. And today we've got an amazing recipe for you. We have got a caramel butterscotch cheesecake. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's already subscribed to the channel. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to click the subscribe button below. And if you enjoy this video, please click like. And what's not to like? This is a caramel butterscotch cheesecake, and it is so good. We had the amazing opportunity to travel a little bit earlier in the year before the real COVID sort of restrictions kicked in. And we went to Paris and we had this cheesecake there, which was amazing had a nice base, had a nice layer of caramel butterscotch, and it had a beautiful lemony, fluffy, cheesy, cakey bit. So I've been working on that and I think I've come close to it and this is really good. So this recipe, we have a little bit of cooking in the oven. So I've got the oven preheating now, gas mark 480 degrees. So that'll be for baking off the base. The caramel butterscotch is done on the stove. And then once that's cooled, it's all in the fridge to set. So let's get to it. Like I said, I have got the oven preheating on gas mark four, that's about 180-ish degrees, and we'll be putting the base into that shortly. Next, we're gonna grease a baking tin. This is a springform pan, eight inches. I wanna give you a tip that I didn't know when I started baking things in springform pans. You may already know this, you may not, I may change your life. The bottom of the pan here, as you can see here, it's got a lip to it that goes all the way around the bottom. And when you buy the springform pan, that is how it's package and that really just gives the most room for packaging but if you cook with it like that what happens is whatever you're cooking gets stuck within that lip and sometimes you can damage it trying to get it out so all it takes is just to flip this over you've got a nice flat surface that you're cooking on it puts a weird sort of space at the bottom of the tray but that's okay it'll be much better for you once you're cooking so i did not know that if you didn't know that now you do you'll never bake the same again. All right, so we're gonna line this tray. We are going to put uh, paper around the side and then also on the bottom. Now, when we do the bottom, we actually want to oversize the bottom bit a little bit. Now, the reason for this is that we're going to be pouring a warm, buttery, butterscotch in there and we don't want to have any gaps in the lining that the butterscotch could seep out of. So this is an eight inch tin. I'm going to cut about a nine inch circle, which will give us a nice little bit up the sides to catch the butterscotch. So let's do that now. And then we'll put the paper around the sides. And as I said, this bottom bit here, we want to make it a bit bigger, a bit wider than the actual tin, so it can go up the sides and act a little bit like a cup to catch the butterscotch. Once the butterscotch is set, that's going to make a really nice base for the fluffy cheesecake. Um, so we're just going to flatten this edge out and do the best we can for that. Okay, let's put that aside for now. And we move on to the base. So in this, we have 110 grams of ground coconut or coconut flour. And to that, we're going to add 15 grams of coconut flour. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to stir through. And as it bakes off, it'll give a nice browning to the base. Next, we're adding 20 grams of erythritol. That just goes straight in there. The last dry ingredient in the base is some pink Himalayan salt, and we are adding one quarter of a teaspoon. Now as you're stirring it, it's your last chance to have a look. Just have a look, see if there's any lumps of coconut flour, and it's your chance to just get in there and break that up a bit. In here, I then have 50 grams of melted unsalted butter. The reason for unsalted butter is that we've already added salt, and we want to be able to control the saltiness of our recipe, so we're doing that separately. Now to this butter, we are adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm mixing the vanilla into the liquid butter. I just find that it helps give a more even distribution of the vanilla through the base recipe. Cool, and so we're gonna pour that in and then we stir it through. And this should give you a really nice crummy texture, like so. All right, so we're gonna put that into our baking tin. Just gonna push it all down to the bottom, pour it all in. And you can use a spatula or clean hands to do this and we're just gonna spread that out evenly and then compress it down. And once you're done, it's gonna look just like this. This goes into the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on your oven. It's just gonna go a nice toasty brown. Okay, in the meantime, while that's cooking, we're gonna to put together our layer of butterscotch caramel. Now in this pan, we have 150 grams of unsalted butter. And to that, I'm adding 65 grams of golden erythritol. 
So we're gonna start warming that up and we wanna see the erythritol dissolve into the butter. Now you can do this with plain erythritol, it doesn't need to be golden, but I've just used it because it does add that little something. So while we're heating this up, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see the butter start to bubble a bit, it's gonna froth. And at some point, the color of that froth is gonna change from white to a slightly brown color. And by that time, the erythritol will have dissolved into it. Once the erythritol is all dissolved, you can turn the heat off. And we're going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla and one quarter teaspoon of salt. All right, in the meantime, our base is done. So let's get that out. Now I have had accidents happen, so what I am doing, I am putting our lovely biscuit base into a tray so that if there are any spills, we're safe. I'm just gonna pour our lovely butterscotch caramel into the base tin. All right, so we are now gonna put this in the fridge to cool. So our base and our butterscotch caramel have been in the fridge for about an hour and a half, and we have come to the point where we put our filling together. So we are gonna start off with two cups of cream, which we are going to beat to firm peaks. All right, perfect, that's done. Put this aside for a moment. Next, we have in this bowl, 400 grams of cream cheese. And to that, we're going to add four tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. And half a teaspoon of vanilla essence. And now we beat this together. And lastly, we have 100 grams of powdered erythritol, which we're going to add in a bit at a time and keep mixing as we do. Now we add the cream cheese lemon mix back into the bowl with the whipped cream. And we're gonna mix them up so they're really well combined. And it's still got that firm texture from the cream. My favorite part is, you know, the testing, because as a cook, you've got to know what you taste like, and yum. So here's the tray out of the fridge, and you can see that's nice and set there. And now we pour this lovely filling into the tin. Now, as we're doing this, we want to start pushing it down into the corners so that it's nice and solid in there and that we're not leaving air bubbles. And you can make it as rustic or as smooth as you like. I like to try and smooth it over a bit. Beautiful, done. And now all that's left to do is put it in the fridge and wait for it to set. Ideally, this could be done the day before so it's got overnight to set. I'm probably gonna let it sit in the fridge for about six hours or so. So once that's done, we'll come back and we'll taste. Okay, so it's been about four hours. The cheesecake is set. Let's have a look. Woohoo, that is hefty. There's a bit of uh, bit of substance to this. Look at that. Nice, you can tell it's set just by pressing on the top of it and it's quite firm. A little bit comes off on the hands, but that's fine. All right, so opening the clip joint. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Just gonna wiggle a knife under there just briefly. That's gonna come off super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Here's that where it does get a little bit tricky, getting the paper off the bottom. Gonna stick that under there. Ew. Making sure it's nice and supported. That is it. Now I'm gonna say that as I was taking it off, I did feel that the center is a little soft, so it probably could have been left to set a little longer. So that's something you can keep in mind when you're making it at home. Now I would generally cut this into about 12 slices. Although the slices might not seem a, a big wedge, they're actually quite high. All right, so just cutting it in half. Look at that. Got a lovely base layer there, got the caramel, and then all this lovely cream cheese in lemony goodness. Now to serve, I recommend putting in a few little blueberries. Just for the tartness, it helps brighten up the rest of the dish. And there you have it, caramel butterscotch cheesecake. 
Look, it's not normally something I'd do, but I'm gonna taste it for you guys. Look at this. If I can slice through that. Look at that. I'm just gonna have it as is without some blueberries to start with. That is magic. Mm. All right. So you've got this beautiful creamy top. Then you've got the, the baked base, which is really nice and toasty. And the caramel layer is actually quite strong, so it sort of goes nice with the creaminess of the cake. That is really, really good. Can't wait to make myself a cup of tea and maybe just finish that off later. Guys, please give this one a try. You know what? There's a whole lot of eating that's about to come up. We've got November and then we're leading on to Christmas. I've already seen decorations in the stores. Keep this in mind, it's something you might wanna try over the festive season. And of course, if you do bake this, please put a photo up on socials, tag us so we can come and have a look. We are popketo underscore on Instagram and we would love to hear from you and even share your photos. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please feel free to share it on Facebook and Twitter. Stay happy, stay healthy, and we will see you next week. Bye.